tutorial we'll learn how to create this cool neon text effect have it some sparks on the edges let's start by creating a new document and uh, we'll be using a font the same font which I've been using genuine and we'll use a font size of 200 points and let's type in Nokia let's zoom in a bit here press on the F key twice to make it completely full screen and using the space key you can move around I'm holding the space key you can see the hand which helps you to move around your screen once you have done that use the move tool and press on control A with your text layer selected we are selecting the whole document here and with these align tools click on the align horizontal and vertical to center the text once you have done that, press on Ctrl D to deselect the selection. After that, right click on this text layer and choose Create Word Path, which creates a path around the text, which you can see by closing the eyeball here. You can see the path which it just created around the whole text. Once you have done that, zoom in a bit and press the A hotkey which gives you the direct selection tool by default it could be on the path selection tool so click and hold and then select your direct selection tool click on the A tool on the A text here and you see the anchor points which are at these points so we'll be giving a different font effect here we'll adjust this path use the pen tool to add a new anchor point and add a new anchor point here using the direct selection tool click on the above anchor point and delete that once you have done that deselect it and click once so that you select this and click and drag it straight upwards so that it's straight on top above the one which is below after you have done that select the pen tool which is the first one and click on this point here using your alt key hold your alt key and click and make a bend where you feel it's perfect once you have done that let's go on to the i the letter i and let's do the same way select your pen add anchor point tool and add a new anchor over here using the direct selection tool let's delete the one below once you have done that click make sure ma as you see that all the anchors have been selected here all the points so deselect and give one new click here and using your shift key and your arrow down arrow key bring it down once twice thrice that's enough once you have done that using a pen tool do the same way as you did it on the top for the A tool hold alt if you don't hold alt this is what happens you move both the paths the alt deletes the new anchor which makes the curve so by holding alt give a curve which makes it a bit sharp in the edge once that's done let's go to the K select it using the direct selection tool the shortcut key for this is A and actually we'll have to add a new anchor here using the add anchor point tool add a new anchor at this point using the direct selection tool press A and delete the top give a click on this point using the shift and the top arrow key drag this straight up up to here and let's add using the pen tool let's move this one also a bit up as 
once that's done using the pen tool let's give a click here and using the alt key let's bend the same way as we did for the two other letters that's it and let's do the same thing for the bottom of this let's add a new anchor we add a new anchor so that once you delete the below anchor let's zoom in a bit here to have a look after we delete this anchor it automatically goes to the previous point above exactly the one which is behind for example if we don't create this anchor point like there is no anchor point next if you click this and press delete key it completely goes straight up which is the previous point so to avoid that we'll add a new anchor point right here and using the direct selection tool we'll delete the one below so that we can make this a bit more longer using the arrow key with the shift hold drag it down same with this let's make both these a bit different take this up a bit it's going to down okay now using the pen tool let's click here once and using the alt key click and drag it a bit right once you have done that you can see the effect here we'll be leaving the letter O because it has no pointed edges it's a complete round okay let's create a new anchor point here as well, we'll use this side this drag this straight down this as well and using the pen tool click and using your key click and drag straight to the left side so that you get this curve make sure it's straight as we'll be adding a uh, stroke to this which would look a bit bend if it would not make this straight and let's drag holding your control key click on both of these anchors make sure you have your direct selection tool selected in case your path selection tool is selected the shortcut key is A which if you not change it in your preference it won't go so using your shift key press A one more time it automatically goes to your direct selection tool and hold your shift key and select both these and drag this one straight up make it a bit more long higher than your K and zoom back a bit once you've done that let's edit this too using your add anchor point let's add one right over here and with your direct selection tool delete this using the pen tool let's do this well that's it done so once you've done that you can see the path here is completed let's save this path so that we don't lose anything come to your paths panel over here if it's not open you could go to windows path and using this arrow over here click and press save path you could write in okay text path so once you have done with the path and you have deleted it you could come back again which is already saved here in the paths so let's create a new layer and using the brush tool make sure you have a complete hard brush with a thickness of about 5 pixels which you can oops this is already 
modified here let's change the let's give a one new click here in case you have edited using the brushes settings let's just click on any of the brushes here for example we need five so let's click on this which is complete full hardness N we're not making a soft edge here once that's done using your pen tool right click here and select stroke path make sure simulate pressure is not selected and we'll be selecting a brush here not pencil or any other one using brush press on ok here you get a complete outline to deselect your path here just hit on escape which should remove your path if that doesn't go you can just right click using a pen tool and click on delete path once you've done that it seems a bit too thick so it's normal it's okay it depends on how thick you'd like it depends on your taste okay once you've done that let's name this layer to outline and we'll add some new effects to this layer a bit later let's create a new layer and call this fill so we'll fill this text here by using the magic wand tool just click make sure you are in your outline layer click in this text so that you get the inner fill if you would use a selection and use the bu paint bucket tool to fill it would just fill in your outline since that's the one we created with the path using your shift key make sure the plus sign is near the wand click on the o, the o the k i and the a once you have that done go back to your fill layer and let's use our gradient tool with the silver gradient I created you can just use any color you like since I've already created this I'll be using just click and drag down straight so that you get this silverish effect we won't be using the color silver at end to change as we add new effects let's deselect this by pressing ctrl D and once you have done that let's add some effect to this fill double click on this point here let me show you that double click on this point so that the blending option open in case you want another way you could right click and click on blending options or you could just click on the FX which is here and click on blending options there are different ways once you are having this open let's go to inner shadow and we'll keep this multiply black 50% opacity we'll change the distance to 3 and the size to 3 we'll leave the choke to 0 once you've done that let's add some bevel and emboss we'll add the depth about 15% size to 2 of soften to 5 pixels that's it we'll be doing for this and press on ok once that's done let's add the outline effect double click on the right side of this layer so that you have this open again and we'll add some effects like outer glow you can have a look at what we're doing here on the outer glow we'll change the blend mode to normal keep the opacity to about 50 percent and we'll be using a blue light blue bright blue we'll use double zero f six ff which is actually complete and the top corner once you have done that let's change the spreading to about 5% size to about 20 pixels and we'll change the contour to about to this rolling sh slope descending order which gives you this neon kind of effect and once you have done that let's change the range to about 80% so that you can have a look at what the range does here and let's zoom in a bit using the control minus and plus you could zoom in while your blending options or anything is open like you could not click on any of your tools here on the left side in the panel you could use your control plus to give a zoom using a space key you could move around to see what's being changed what's actually going on after editing the options here 
so in the outer glow if we change the range the range gives how much glow you'd like it to be effect applied on your text so we'll add 80 percent which gives more inner glow of this outer glow okay press on okay here and done with that and once you've done that let's create let's create a new layer whoops okay we'll create a new layer here create a new layer and we'll call this a bit fill burn so that now we'd like to make our fill a bit more darker so that it looks like it's a glow glowing neon once you've done that let's um, hold on your control key and click on the fill so that you get the inner selection of the one we just created a few minutes ago and go to your filter tab go to render and clouds make sure your rear, rear foreground and background color is black and white so that you get your clouds in a correct manner and press ctrl D to deselect it change the blending options of this to linear burn that's it so you get this dark effect we'll add some F blending options to this so let's opening the blending options dialog box and we'll change the gradient to the blue which we just created is if it's there it's not there okay let's create it again the blue which is the same code the complete aqua which is just click over here and go and straight on the top corner <coughs> sorry excuse me one after that's done let's change this blue, white to black and you can see the color which we are adding here once you've done that let's change the blending mode to multiply which gives it more dark and then press on ok so the effect for this is done after that's done let's create another layer oops and we'll name this layer sparks yes there let's zoom in a bit over here so we see what we are exactly doing now using the pen tool we'll add some sparks on any of these pointed edges here so we'll use the ones which are really dark like we'll start for the A using your pen tool make sure your brush we'll adjust the brush settings to 2 pixels which is a small one let's see what we got here yeah that's good and using the pen tool let's create some electric kind of effect let's zoom in a bit more using the pen tool let's click and bend and just as you know how the electric gives there we go right click and click on stroke path make sure your simulated pressure is switched on now and press on ok you could delete the path by right click pressing on delete path once you've done that let's add some more some over here and let's fill this again we could add some more like we could add the same way here oh, that's too far and we'll add a last one Okay, once you've done that, let's zoom in a bit back here. So the one which looks, let's remove the last one we just created. Doesn't really look like an electric. Create another one here using the pen tool. Let's create this. Let's zoom in back here. Okay, once you've done that, let's add some effects to this blending options of the spark layer and we'll be using uh, outer glow with the same color we just used I think it's so FF and we'll change the blending mode to normal use a hundred percent opacity with the others remaining it as default 
then press ok so you get this kind of glow electric effect which is we must be using the same color can adjust this a bit the same way we will just create this to the end the letter end stop point and the case down point it's depends really on you if you would like to create it on all the sharp edges we created so I'll just create the one here for this tutorial I'll just create some few with the same layer so that you get the same blending options let's create some more here click and make a bend here and add some new right click stroke path and simulate pressure ok it's better if you delete the path or you could just press on escape twice so that it deletes it and let's add some more here stroke path ok there we go you can see the effect which comes there we go I think that's really enough that's a lot of sparks ok let's create one at the uh, bottom of this key and the same thing okay let's create some two more here and another one right here this okay there we have created these three corners sparks let's zoom in back here you can see the effect so now we'll uh, since the spark doesn't look really bright it already does let's make it a bit more bright let's create a new layer and call this spark glow let's make that sparks glow okay once you've done that let's use the brush tool and make this one complete zero hardness with about 40 pixels yeah that's good and let's make sure the foreground is in the white color or actually let's change this to the same color we've used which is the double zero f zero f double f okay once you've done that let's just brush up a bit here so that you know where's your spark like just this part some of this part and some of this part and using a selection tool change back make sure you always have the habit of changing back to your selection tool using the V hotkey change the blending mode of this glow to let's take overlay is good you could see that it's really bright so let's just reduce the opacity to about 80 pixels 80 is good 75 70 70 is good once you've done that let's that's all actually we have, we have done here if you would like you could use the brush tool again and brighten up some other edges like this point or some point of this you could just brighten up all the sharp edges point some here some part of this okay that's good now let's duplicate the whole layer here by clicking on the top layer and using a shift key clicking on the last layer which is the outline layer and let's duplicate it by right clicking and clicking on duplicate layers and just press on ok once you've done that press the control E to merge since you've merged them you see a lot of extra glow here so let's just rub in a bit here using the eraser tool make sure the diameter is somewhere around say 70 or make that less 50 50 is good and make the hardness to zero let's just brush uh, remove some of this here just making it out of order let's adjust this once you've done that let's change 
the blending mode of this layer to let's say soft light soft light is good yeah it just makes this a bit more darker and it just glows some of the edges you can see it changes the light part of this area here to dark okay once you've done that let's change let's add some blur to this go to filter blur Gaussian blur and we'll add it about 5 pixels is good let's check this here I think 5 pixels is good okay this one okay once you've done that let's add if you're done with the text effect here it completely looks like a neon effect there are many ways of creating a neon effect I'll be putting on more tutorials for that let's make the background here so let's create a new layer at the bottom of these layers here actually let's use the same background layer there's no need to create a new layer once you've done that let's select the background layer and go to the gradient tool let's use radial for this using the same colors the aqua color to the black let's create a s let's zoom back a bit here using the F key click it so that you have your gray part seen okay there we go once you have that done let's use this radial effect and using a shift key just oops that's the wrong way let's off in the reverse and make sure you have this blue a bit more in width so let's add this a bit straight more that's two in the page let's use it out of the page so make sure you have it dragged from out of this document let's make it from here so a bit more that's a lot you can just adjust this as you know it's okay okay this is good let's select back your selection tool and let's go back make sure you're doing this all in your background layer doesn't matter if it's locked it gets unlocked once you have added any effect to it go to filter blur motion blur and using the blur let's use this distance make the angle to minus 90 a straight and let's add this blur to complete full or a bit less so make sure that this blur reaches to this point it must reach this point so that you know that like the light is hitting on this neon you could see that reaching here let's add about 800 pixels yeah that's good 800 is good press on ok and that's the way we have done this that's done it looks a bit similar to the one sh complete version we just showed you in the start so thanks for watching and I uh, hope you learned something from this using the way we could edit this text path bending up some edges and we have our original font here which is at the back you could see the difference on how we have edited this point here the K the I and it uh, it's possible even if you would want to edit your letter O but that depends on how you'd like it well, thanks for watching.